Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother, Lazarus, was ill. So the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled, and he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he, who opened the eyes of the blind man, also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. 
Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today's Gospel is from John 11, 1 to 45, and this is the story about raising of Lazarus. Raising of Lazarus is mentioned many times during the year, and this is one of them. But this is probably one of the most important miracles, if not the important miracle of our Lord Jesus Christ, if you do not count his own resurrection. The reason is Lazarus, who is a close friend of our Lord Jesus Christ, died. And not only died when our Lord reached his tomb, he had been four days in the grave. And strangely, our Lord was aware that he died and he got notification that he is very sick. And the gospel says, when our Lord knew that he is sick, he said, this sickness is unto death, but not unto death, but for the glory of God. And he stayed two further days. And then our Lord reached Lazarus and Martha and Mary, and that's the house he always liked to stay in, in Bethany. And when he arrived there, both of them were weeping and crying. Martha met him first and she said, Lord, if you were there, my brother would have not died. He told her, if you believe, you will see more. And then Mary came and everybody followed her to the tomb. And when they arrived to the tomb, Mary also said the same thing. If you were there, Lord, my brother would have not been dead. And our Lord repeated, I am the resurrection and life. And then our Lord, when he was confronted with the two sisters and their feelings, he showed his human side of feelings towards his friend's death and he cried. He groaned and he cried. And this is probably maybe the third time our Lord is mentioned to cry. One before Lazarus, one over Jerusalem, which happened a few days after this miracle, when he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you were to know the time of your visitation. And the third in Gethsemane. But this time our Lord cried over all humanity. He cried how low human that he created their level went down to. They went to the level that the sin became so overruling them to the extent death became the norms. Everybody has to die. And our Lord cried that sin have infiltrated humankind and death became the norm. But also we need to pay attention to many other th things in this miracle. One of them, our Lord's delay or seemingly delay. Our Lord knew that his friend that you love is sick. But when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. And by the time he arrived, it was four days that he was in the tomb. And maybe this is one of the things we always like to tell our Lord. Why our Lord, when we call you in something that up to your will, you come late. And our Lord probably will say, this is for the glory of God. I would have come earlier and the miracle would have been healing. But if I come late, the miracle becomes hundredfolds, raising of the dead. Sometimes we ask God for a minor thing and we don't see it accomplished. But when he delays his response, we see even much more intervention of our Lord into our lives. Otherwise, we would have not thought that will ever happen. The second lesson in this miracle is our Lord's feelings. 
Our Lord is 100% God, 100% man, without separation even for a twinkle of an eye. His humanity and divinity without mixing, without intermingling, and humanity and divinity united without separation. And his humanity appears today in front of the tomb and the grave of Lazarus, weeping, crying, sharing the pains and sufferings of mankind and his own beloved family, and that's his humanity. Although minutes later, his divinity will call upon Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. And this is very important because in many miracles, we see both. Like we see our Lord walking on the water and we see our Lord telling the storms enough, shut. And we see our Lord starving or eat, needing to drink or to food or to be thirsty. But we see him also in his power in every time after. His humanity and his divinity almost always in every miracle we see them. We see him thirsty for the Samaritan woman, but we see him thirsty on the cross and then all nature complains that the Creator is actually naked on the cross. The other point about Lazarus that our Lord spoke about working. He said, 12 hours in the day, if anyone walks in the day, does not stumble. But because he sees the light of this world, if anyone walks in the night, he stumble because the light is not in him. And our Lord speaks of the day light and the hours of the day that we should be working while we have life. Because there will be night, there will be time that either will be dead or sick or we can't walk, work. We need to serve as much as we have light, as much as our lives still exist, as still we have a breath in our nose. If we do not, then the night has come. Exactly what happened with the foolish and five wise virgins. At one time, their oil finished and they slept and they woke up and five of them were able to lit their lamps and the others could not. And at that time, we say, am I able to use the time for the glory of God? Or I am wasting my time throughout many, many things in my life. And when the night comes, I will not be ready because I didn't work the 12 hours of the day. The other lesson in Lazarus' story is the deity, the divinity of our Lord, that he is above death, even the death and being rotten for four days in the tomb. This miracle was so important to the extent Palm Sunday, which happens a day after this miracle, Lazarus and Jesus enter Jerusalem together and the Jews and the high priests wanted to kill even Lazarus. The reason is the people who were four days ago were sympathizing with his sisters coming today to celebrate his resurrection. And this is one of the proofs that Jesus is God. He is not just a simple man or a prophet or arch prophet, but he is God incarnate. And that's why this is one of the few miracles mentioned in the Gospel of John, because every miracle mentioned in the Gospel of John were mentioned to prove the deity of our Lord. Exactly like converting the water into wine, our Lord does something very interesting. He tells the people, remove the stone. And you always wonder, Lord, you have power to bring his spirit back to him after four days, and you are asking for assistance from us to move a stone. Isn't the Lord that he could raise Lazarus 
could have also moved the stone? Lord, in your own resurrection, you resurrected while the stone was left, and then it was moved to reveal and declare your resurrection. Why do you need a person or persons to help you showing Lazarus out of the tomb? And maybe the answer was, I want to share with mankind every act of love I do to other people. I want you people to help in the way you can and let me do the things you cannot do. You cannot convert water into wine, but you can fill the pots with water. You cannot raise Lazarus from the death, but you can move a stone. And our Lord wants our share in his miracles. And that's why when we decline helping, sometimes he wonder and says, I want to do wonders amongst you. But you are holding me because you do not want to do the simple little things. Moving a stone, filling the water, helping somebody, let me do the healing, the curing, and resurrection. Finally, Lazarus came out and he asked also for another help from the people. Now lose him and give him back to his family. Lose him and let him go. And again, Lord, you could have done it. You have done it to your own self. It's easier to do it to others. You came out from your own coffin. But our Lord again wants the share of everyone in the church with their own brothers. The church is one body of Christ. The hand has to help the eye and the eye has to help the leg and the ear has to help the nose and so on. Lazarus is every single person amongst us who is deadly paralyzed. And our Lord is willing to do miracles if we do something, bring him to his feet, opening the tomb, catching his hand and holding him up. So today is a miracle of hope and a miracle of sharing with God in his work amongst people. I hope we learn many, many of the lessons happen with Lazarus Glory be to God forever. Amen.